because I, I really need you guys to understand at least this idea and process that we're going to be doing with, all right? So the idea is when you guys were solving equations, all right, there's a couple equations you guys have. We had x plus 3 equals 6. You could do x minus 3 equals 6. We had 3x equals 6. And we had x over 3 equals 6. Those are all different four operations. Remember adding, subtracting, so multiplying, dividing functions, right? Yes. Now, there was three different types of functions that we really had when we looked at operations. Now, when I said solve for x, you would have to do what to solve for this equation? To get x by itself, you had to do what? Subtract, Subtract it. Our subtraction. Do you know why, why do we have to use the subtraction? Because you have to move it over to the other side of the x on its own. Good. And what kind of operations did we call these? Uh, inverse. Inverse operations. We're using the subtraction property of equality, which is the inverse oh. operation, right? So okay. just like you mentioned, it's the opposite operation. But we're, what we're doing is you're undoing what's happening to the x, right? Inverse operations, you subtract. So x equals 3. In this and one, the inverse operation of subtraction is what? Three. Uh, Addition. Any. The inverse operation of multiplication? Uh, Every two. two. Divided by three. Oh my gosh. X equal two. And then the inverse operation of division is? Multiplication. Multiplication. Now, And what was always the hardest one for you guys to remember? You guys always got stuck on the division one. But when you think about me as a teacher, what we're doing, I'm saying, hey, if it's add, you subtract. Subtract, you add. Multiply, you divide. And then everybody would be like, what do I do here? Well, if it's divided, you multiply, right? You just want to follow the pattern of inverse operation. So if you guys can understand inverse operations, what we're doing is we're undoing what's happening to the variables. Does that make sense? So let me give you guys an equation. What if I said, here's an equation, y equals 3x minus 6. Okay? And I said, I want you to find the inverse of this function. Or actually, let's, I want you to find, sorry, let's just find the inverse of the Kona function. Let's call it an equation. I want you to find the inverse of this equation. All right? So now you can think of what's happening to these variables. Well, let's look at the variable x. Right now, this variable x is being multiplied by 3, and it's being subtracted by 6. So do you guys think that the inverse is going to include some of these opposite operations? Yes. Yes, right? Is it already, like, found because it's... There's no, there's nothing happening to the variable. Well, so there's something happening to the variable, which is the three and the x. No, they're saying that no, the variable is that's what it. Oh, you okay? Never mind. So what I'm gonna say is, if I ask you guys to find the inverse of this equation, here's what you're gonna want to do, and you're gonna want to write this down, John, then a spot where you can keep it. I am. I'm gonna do it in the inside of my folder. So the first step, okay, is make sure you have it in terms of y, e, y, and x. All right, we'll talk about this when we get into functions. But the first thing, because what I was saying is, if you had f of x equals 3x minus 6, which we'll talk about later, you want to write, remember f of x, we kind of said, hey, f of x is kind of similar to the y. They're both the output. So rewrite f of x as y. It just helps you out. It clears a lot more confusion. So the first step is really to always make sure you have it in a linear equation, OK? So the first step is to write as a linear equation. Now, sometimes, guys, the first step might already be done for you. It might already be in y and x terms. Okay, so you don't have to write it. Sometimes I might write it as a function. So what you're going to want to do then is write it as a linear. Step number two. And guys, all you simply need to do is write it down, follow the steps, and you'll get exactly where you need to do. Step number two, swap the x and the y. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap the variables. Instead of being x and y, what we're going to do is we're going to switch them. So now, so here is step one. Step two looks like this. x equals 3y minus 6. So remember, remember what we're doing, kind of like undoing, reversing, some people said? Right, right with inverse, it's kind of like the reverse, the opposite. Yeah, but that so what we're doing is, we're just, oh, you'll see though. What we're doing is we're reversing kind of the x and the y. We're, just, we're making them opposite of each other. And you'll see why that's going to help us. Now, the third step is to solve 
What's our favorite variable to solve for? X. Oh, well, sorry. Why don't you solve for Y? <laughs> so, solve for Y. So now you guys can see, how do I solve for Y? I have to apply my what? My inverse operations, right? So you add first. Divide. Right. So I, first thing I do is I have to always undo addition and subtraction. Oh, it's so I have add X plus 6 equals 3Y. Then I divide by 3. And my final answer is y equals x plus 6 divided by 3. Now, you guys can try to guess this stuff, but I'm telling you, you're more than likely going to get it wrong if you say, oh, it's being multiplied by 3 and then subtracting 6. So that just means I need to add 6 and divide by 3. I'm telling you, for maybe a simple equation, you might guess and get it right. But we're going to be working on some harder problems that you're just not want to guess. You're going to want to follow these steps. The last rule, after you solve for y, is right as inverse. So our inverse function, if y equals 3x minus 6, y can't equal x plus 6 my, divided by 3. What we call it is y inverse. y inverse equals x plus 6 divided by 3. So that is your equation, y inverse. Or if it was function, it would be f inverse of x equals x plus 6 divided by 3. So that's kind of like our notation for inverse, is that little, we call it a negative exponent. It doesn't represent a negative exponent, but that's what it represents. That's what it looks like. You do that every time you do inverse. So when I say inverse, you just follow, literally just take these steps and you just follow them. Make sure it's written as a linear equation, swap x and y, solve for y, write with the inverse form. That's it. And y equals x plus 6 divided by 3 is step 4. Is that the inverse? That's the inverse. That is the opposite equation of your 3x minus 6. Right? Good. Now, you guys don't need to know this for a test, but I just want to show it to you.